There is nothing political about wanting to have the right to live. Right now, I am joined by a young man who was born in Vancouver, BC. My brother, Christian Covington. How you doing, man? Thanks, my Nate, man. Good to see you, man. Good to see you again. So first, what was it like growing up in Vancouver? Vancouver is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. So I was blessed, very blessed to be able to, you know, come from, you know, a West Coast city that really encompassed everything, whether it was community and sports for that matter. No, it really was a blessing to be able to grow up in the Pacific Northwest. So yeah. have you ever had moments growing up where you thought to yourself, I'm dealing with um, an issue that we are not talking about in 2020 so much. Speaking as a man of color, um, eventually, you know, the talk is going to come up in conversation with our parents. Mm. Uh, and that was something I wasn't really ready for because um, really around the time I was 13, when I became a teenager, that's when my father had to talk with me. You know, he you know, he's a black man, grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, born in the 50s. I was kind of baffled, really. I didn't really understand why this talk was needed. And then all of a sudden, the moment I had that talk, then I started noticing little things, um, whether it be, you know, driving through the border, certain questions that would be asked of me and my father, but they wouldn't ask my mother the same question. You know, my mother, mm. my mother being white and mixed as well with some other ethnicities. They told my mother to roll down the window at the, you know, this is Border Patrol, and they would ask my mother, are you okay? Oh, man. They would ask my, my, they would ask my mother, do you know these two men in front of you? Are they holding you against their, are they holding you against their, uh, against your will? Wait, 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 wait. That, that really happened? Yes. We were blessed to not really be exposed like that to a lot of racial injustice, uh, to a lot of, you know, you know, let's just call it what it is, so flat out racism. Yep. yep. But it all started being, you start you start to pick up on little things here and there. And obviously my eyes were really um, opened wide as soon as I moved down south to be able to start my college career. There's a misconception that when you get to the league, you're good. Like you're removed from discrimination, being randomly stopped by the police. Um, do you feel like there's a responsibility for athletes um, nowadays who um, have a platform and using that platform, whether it's your voice, whether it's your messaging on social media. At the end of the day, we are citizens. We love our home country, Canada. You know, I'm, I'm a dual citizen myself. I know you're dual. Yep. <laughs> it's, oh, man, it's hard. It really is sometimes to be able to, to, to speak out with these right. issues. But, I mean, it's, it's, you have every right as a citizen to be able to voice your concerns to not make this a political thing, because that's where a lot of times, that's where people take this. It's not, there is nothing political about wanting to have the right to live. Yep. It's not a political issue. This is a right and wrong issue. This is a good versus evil issue that we are all trying to fight and that we all should be trying to come together to fight and end. It's as simple yep. as that. Yeah, so, it's, it's amazing. It's, that, and that's why I love the uninterrupted platform. You know, absolutely. because, you know, we, we, we can see random people at the local coffee shop talking about politics and social injustice. You could hear people at the weight room talking about it. Somebody at, a, at their cubicle at work talking about it. And nobody ever has a problem. The moment an athlete who has a huge stage says anything, people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Go tackle somebody. Mm -hmm. Go catch a touchdown. Why don't you go throw a slant route? You talked about... Um, standing up and saying, yes, black lives also matter. And you also thought education reform is something that we should focus on. Can you touch on those a little bit? You know, for the most part, I was, you know, I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to a private school uh, in, in Vancouver. But at that same time, with regards to Canadian history, with regards to world history, black history wasn't really talked about a lot. It's real talk wasn't really talked about a lot. You know, Black, Indigenous, uh, people of color's history wasn't really mentioned a lot. It is not the teacher's fault. It is not the school's fault. It's We know it's a funding issue. We know it's a money. At the end of the day, money is always going to play a factor with this stuff. But 
that's something that needs to really be priority because if you don't if you don't have education in your life, you're just setting yourself up for failure in everything else. With regards to everything regarding the civil rights movement, um, a lot of times you, when it comes to the history of uh, racial tension and racial injustice in North America and you know in particular in the United States, you really just talk about slavery, a lot of chunk missing, and then civil rights. Civil rights. And <laughs> that's then, a fact. I remember that's a really, fact. really the only thing that the main takeaway that I had in school was with regards to civil rights. I did a project on Martin Luther King with what he stood for with regards to the eye of, you know, we, we discussed everything from I have a dream, the million man march, yep. uh, sit ins and everything that he was involved in. And then unfortunately his assassination. And then it just seemed like there's a drop off. Yeah. After that, nothing else was talked about. And so that's the problem right there. there. That's the disconnect that we have with regards to this, with education in North America in general. Um, there needs to be uh, some accountability with regards to educating ourselves, educating the future generations and the people uh, and really giving access and uh, teachers and schools access to the right, uh, right curriculum and the right, just right books at the end of the day. Right. Really. Mm -hmm. What is your message to the next generation? Understand what your brother next to you, what your sister next to you, understand what they're going through and what their culture has been through. And out of that, show them understanding through your actions, through your love, through your support. If I know where you're coming from, and you know where I'm coming from, there's a, there's a connection right there that we can move forward together. That's a fact. And that's something that we have to understand with the climate that we're in, with this tension that we're in, in North America and really around the world. Let's just be honest. Yep. The only way we're going to move forward is if, we're, if we do it together. Man, thank you so much. Continue to do your thing. Like I told you before, big fan. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you out there on the field.